friends in this course till now we have introduced the order statistics and their distributions we considered probability integral transform and uh, therefore the distribution of the probability integral transforms of the order statistics uh, the distributions of one of them the joint distribution their moment structure then we introduce the empirical distribution function and using the empirical distribution function if we consider the transformations of the uh, uh, random sample observations and their order statistics and we looked at their distributions their joint distributions and their moment structures we saw that how these can be used in certain two sample testing problems uh, we discussed the goodness of fit tests by kolmogorov and smirnov and also the original one that is by car pearson uh, now we will concentrate on the location problems single sample location problem we have seen that one of the uh, raw tests or a naive test is given by the sign test that means how many of the observations are above the median value which we want to test or below that so that is called the sign test we have seen it's a uh, all right i mean it's uh, performed but it doesn't depend upon the measurements values it is simply dependent upon the uh, how many positive or how many negative values are there uh, then there are certain other tests which are based on the observation the ranks of the individual observations rather than just the sign so one of the first one is the wilcoxon sign rank test so let me introduce the problem so we are considering single sample location problem with symmetric and continuous distribution so let us consider suppose x1 x2 xn a random sample from a distribution function fx so this is a cumulative distribution function assume that f is continuous and f is symmetric about a point theta see if it is symmetric about theta then of course we can say that theta is the median okay in the signed uh, uh, sign test we have not assumed symmetry we just say that uh, whether median is a given value m not of course the distribution of that thing we have found for the case of uh, symmetric distribution also uh, but in general it can be anything so we want to test uh, problems like this whether theta is equal to 0 basically we can test theta is equal to theta naught uh, so see if we consider theta naught so without loss of generality we can take theta naught to be 0 as in previous problem i have already explained so against we can consider hypothesis of the time theta greater than 0 or h2 theta less than 0 or h3 theta not equal to 0 so these could be alternatives we will consider application of the sign rank statistic this is called wilcoxon signed rank statistic this was given by wilcoxon in 1945 let us consider observations by taking their magnitude so now the raw values have transformed to their magnitudes and consider their ordering so let us consider say x 1 among them now this is different you note here firstly we are considering magnitude and then we are ordering so this these are different from that note that in general 
this x i will not be same as x i. If all the observations are positive, then this may be true. If all the observations are negative, then reverse of this may be true. That means, uh, uh, the ordering will be simply reversed. So, this is different. We are looking at the magnitudes and let us consider say R i plus is the rank of absolute x i among x 1, x 2, x n. Now, if we are considering this, then if we consider the vector r plus that is r 1 plus and so on r n plus. So, this will be simply a permutation of 1 to n is a permutation. So, that is why it is called signed rank because we have considered modulus here. So, we are not bothered about the plus minus sign is a permutation of 1 to n. Now, based on this we define u x i u x i is equal to 1 if x i is positive and it is equal to 0 if x i is less than 0. Of course, equal to 0 case we are ignoring because we are dealing with the continuous random variables. So, probability of x i equal to 0 are, uh, will be 0. Now, based on this we define t plus, t plus is summation of u x i r i plus i is equal to 1 to n then actually it is nothing but the sum of ranks of modulus x i for which x i is actually positive because I am taking u x i into r i plus. So, if uh, x i is negative then this term will not be counted. So, it is the sum of the ranks of modulus x i for which x i is positive. This is called Wilcoxon signed rank statistic. So, now you can understand that I am considering only the ones which are positive and for those which are positive I am looking at the ranks of x i is among the ordered modulus x i s. Okay. So, we then now you can easily see that what will happen that if if theta is greater than 0 that means greater than theta naught or something like that. So, here since we have taken without loss of general t 0 then there will be more values which will be positive. Therefore, this value will be somewhat larger. So, if we consider the distribution of t plus and we consider the percentage points of that and again see although the random variables are uh, continuous, but this t plus is uh, discrete because this is simply the sum here as in the signed rank and as in the signed test statistic this will Coxon signed rank statistic is also having a discrete distribution. So, therefore, there is a possibility that a particular significance level may not be attained. So, uh, we then consider in the same way uh, define c beta to be the smallest beta uh, sorry smallest t such that probability of t plus greater than or equal to t under the null hypothesis that is median is 0 is less than or equal to beta and of course, c 1 minus beta to be the largest t such that probability of t plus less than t is greater than or equal to 1 minus beta. Of course, beta is some number between 0 and 1. So, the so you can consider basically that c beta is the actually if it is a continuous uh, distribution then it will be simply the upper 100 beta percent point and uh, 
uh, this one will become the lower 1 minus uh, 100 1 minus beta percent point here. But since uh, the distribution of t plus is uh, discrete, so we need to define in the terms of a smallest and largest here. Okay. So, we can then consider that a level alpha test for H naught against H 1 is to reject H naught if T plus is greater than or equal to some C alpha against H 2 it will be to reject H naught if T plus is less than or equal to some C 1 minus alpha against H 3 it will be reject H naught if T plus is either greater than some C alpha by 2 or T plus is less than some C 1 minus alpha by 2. Now, the question comes about the determination of the C alpha values. Nowadays, of course, it is easy to look at the uh, computer program and we can fix up this uh, thing, but let us look at a general result of this nature. Actually, since this is a random permutation in general, because given observed values, this R 1 plus R 2 plus R n plus 1 will be a random permutation of 1 to n and how many permutations will be there? There are n factorial permutations here. Therefore, each permutation will have a probability 1 by n factorial under the uh, null hypothesis. So, let us write this as a result here. We have the following theorem. Let us consider u x vector to be the u x 1, u x 2, u x n that is sign of x i. So, we just collect them. So, this is actually a collection of 1 to 1 0, 1s and zeros, and we consider the r plus as the vector of the signed ranks under H naught that is theta is equal to 0, u and r plus they are independently distributed and probability of u x i is equal to 1 is equal to p naught of u x i is equal to 0 that will be half and r plus has a discrete uniform distribution over the set S n of permutations of 1 to n. That is we are saying probability of r 1 plus is equal to some r 1 and so on r n plus is equal to r n that is equal to 1 by n factorial for r is equal to r 1 r 2 r n belonging to S n. S n is the set of all permutations of the number 1 to n. Let us look at uh, a rough proof of this. So, x 1, x 2, x n are independent and identically distributed random variables. Now, this implies that u x 1, u x 2, u x n they will be independent and identically distributed random variables. It will also mean that modulus of x 1, modulus of x 2, modulus of x n these are also I i d. Now, if we look at the 
r plus vector these ranks are functions of modulus x1 modulus x2 modulus xn isn't it therefore because how i have defined r i r i is the rank of modulus x i among modulus x 1 modulus x 2 modulus x n. That means, this is entirely a function of the absolute values here. Okay. So, here you look at r plus is a function of modulus x 1 modulus x 2 modulus x n. Now, you see here u is a function of x 1, x 2, x n and this is a function of modulus. So, if we can show that u x i is independent of the modulus, then we are through. So, hence if we show that u x i is independent of modulus x i for any i then u and r plus will be independent. Let us consider say probability of say u x i is equal to 0 modulus x i less than or equal to x. Then this is equal to probability of u x i is equal to 0 into probability of modulus x i less than or equal to x. This is one statement I need to prove. I also need to prove probability of u x i is equal to 1 modulus x i less than or equal to x is equal to u x i is equal to 1 modulus x i less than or equal to x. These are the things to be proved. Now, one thing you note, if I take this small x to be negative, then certainly this term is 0 and this term is 0 and similarly in the second statement. So, both the results are satisfied both the statements are trivially if x is less than 0. Now, let us consider x to be greater than 0. Now, for greater than 0, let us consider one term here u x i is equal to 0 modulus x i less than or equal to x. Now, this is x i less than 0 because u x i is 0 if x i is less than 0 and the second part I write as minus x less than or equal to x i less than or equal to x. Now, this is nothing but if you combine these two, it is becoming simply minus x less than x i less than 0 we have assumed that x i has a symmetric distribution about 0. So, this can be written as half times minus x less than x i less than. So, here of course, less than or equal to is there. Uh, so, we can include that. Of course, it will not make any difference if I by mistake do not put equal to because the probability of equality is actually 0. So, this statement is due to symmetric nature of capital F. So, therefore, this is nothing but P naught of u x i is equal to 0 into probability of modulus x i less than or equal to x. So, you can see here, I have proved this statement for x less than 0, it is trivially true. For x greater than 0, now the proof is there. In a similar way, if you consider p naught u x i is equal to 1 modulus x i less than or equal to x for x greater than 0. 
so that is equal to probability of x i greater than 0 minus x less than or equal to x i less than or equal to x that is equal to probability of now if i again combine these two statements it is reducing to 0 greater than less than x i less than or equal to x and as before due to symmetry this can be written as half times probability of minus x less than or equal to x i less than or equal to x which is nothing but probability of u x i is equal to 1 into probability of modulus x i less than or equal to x. So, we have proved this uh, second statement for x less than 0 as well as for x greater than 0. So, if you look at u x i say or u x 1 for example, so it is certainly independent of modulus x 1 and naturally it is independent of modulus x 2, modulus x 2, modulus x n. So, in particular what I am able to prove is that u of x 1 will be independent of the vector r 1 plus r 2 plus r n plus. In a similar way u x 2 if I consider it is independent of the vector r 1 plus r 2 plus r n plus. So, if I look at the total vector because u x i are independent and identically distributed. So, if I look at the vector of u that is this one since each of them is independent of r plus if I look at the vector here which is obtained simply by combining independent random variables therefore, this is also going to be independent of r plus. So, this proves that this proves that u and r plus they are independent they are independently distributed now since x1 x2 xn are independent therefore modulus x 1 modulus x 2 modulus x n are independent and also identical. Therefore, any ordering among them will be equally likely. Therefore, the distribution of uh, this will be simply the distribution of r plus is r 1 plus is equal to r 1 and so on r n plus is equal to r n that is equal to 1 by n factorial for any permutation r 1 r 2 r n belonging to s n. This s n is denoting the set of all permutations of the numbers 1 to n. Now, let us look at uh, further the distribution of t plus. I have been able to obtain separately the distribution of the terms which are involved in t plus. Here the distribution of u is coming, the distribution of r i plus is coming, also the independence is there. So, now somehow we try to utilize this to derive the distribution of t plus. Let us look at it. Let k be the number of x i's which are positive. Of course, we have seen the distribution of k that is binomial n half under the null hypothesis and also let us consider let s i be the rank of x i in modulus x 1 modulus x 2 modulus x n. Now, this is uh, important here. When I am considering ordinary this one then the rank of x i is simply the 
ith1 whatever term is coming. Now, I am looking at the rank of rho xi among the modulus x2, x1 modulus x2 modulus xn. So, uh, this is only for positive xi's. Okay? The rank of <coughs> see originally it would have been that in the same order it would have come, but now because the sum of the negative x i's will be placed in between because of the taking absolute value, therefore these ranks will change. So, let us consider say what is probability of say capital S1 is equal to small s1 and so on, capital S k is equal to small s k, uh, where capital uh, sorry, let me put here capital K this is this uh, number of positive x i s. Let us consider under the null hypothesis. So, this is s 1 s k is equal to s k. Now, I am putting a small k given k is equal to small k p naught k is equal to k. So, that is equal to n c k 1 by 2 to the power n 1 by n c k. So, this cancels out you are getting simply 1 by 2 to the power n. Uh, so, you can see this number is 1 by 2 to the power n here. The reason is that each of the x i's can be positive or negative with, with probability half. Okay? Let us consider say t plus, what are the values of t plus this takes values 0 1 up to n into n plus 1 by 2. If all of them are positive then it will be n by n plus 1 by 2, if all are negative then this will be 0. So, now let us consider u n t it is the number of arrangements of s 1, s 2, s k this is capital K which give s 1 plus s 2 plus s k is equal to t. Okay? So, you can actually see suppose I have n is equal to 1 that means only one observation is there then u 1 0 that means how many arrangements will be giving you this is equal to uh, 0 that will be simply 1. How many arrangements will give 1? Only 1 because either x 1 can be positive or negative. So, if I consider say p 1 0, okay, so now let me define and similarly if I look at say n is equal to 2, for n is equal to 2 u 1 0 will be 1, u 1 1 that will be equal to 1. Let us uh, derive a recurrence relation here. It can be written like this u n t that will be equal to u n minus 1 t minus n plus u n minus 1 t. So, this is the recurrence relation that we will be getting. Because if you are looking at say ra ranks of x 1, x 2, x n minus 1 and then you add x n here, then what will happen? This t n minus 1 plus so, either it will remain t or it will become t minus n if t n plus uh, is equal to t because either it will be added by uh, either it will be added by uh, n that means in case it is positive then all of them will be added by 1 if it is negative then no value is added here the previous ranks will remain the same. So, it will not change the value or in each one one extension will be there. So, it will become t minus n plus n. So, if I consider probability distribution of t plus then it is equal to 0 if t is not in the interval and it does not take one of the values 0, 1 and so on n into n plus 1 by 2 and it is equal to u n t divided by 2 to the power n if t is in the set 0 1 to n into n plus 1 by 2. Uh, 
this recurrence relation actually gives you a method of calculation of this values of u and t because you are having say p naught t plus is equal to t then that is u n t divided by 2 to the power n. But this we can also write as x n less than 0 t n minus 1 is equal to t plus x n greater than 0 t n minus 1 is equal to t minus n. Now, both of these are known that is half times u n minus 1 t by 2 to the power n minus 1 plus u n minus 1 t minus n to the power. So, actually this gives you a method of evaluating the uh, probability distribution of t plus at the nth stage. In a similar way one may consider t minus also. we may also consider t minus that is 1 minus u x i. That means, I am taking the ranks of negative 1, because when u x i is 0, 1 minus u x i will become 1. So, that is actually n into n plus 1 by 2 minus t plus. So, this t minus is directly related to that that is basically we are saying t plus plus t minus is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2. If we consider say t is equal to t plus minus t minus which is of course, equal to 2 t plus minus n into n plus 1 by 2. For two sided testing problem when the alternative is uh, theta is not equal to 0, if we are considering this alternative for this, this uh, t gives uh, more power than t plus. So, this actually implies t plus is equal to you can take it to the other side you get 1 by 2 t plus n into n plus 1 by 4. Now, we show that distribution of t is symmetric about 0. So, t is equal to 2 times sigma twice u x i minus 1 into, so this 2 I can write inside r i plus i is equal to 1 to n. So, that is equal to 2 u x i j minus 1 into j, j is equal to 1 to n, because each of this r i plus will take some values 1 to n. So, I am writing that, then correspondingly this value will change here. This x i 1, x i 2, x i n, this is a permutation of 1 to n. So, this permutation is obtained in the way in which the ranks are distributed. So, we give it a new name let us call it sigma w j that is w j is defined by this term. Now, what are the values of that w j? It takes value either plus j or minus j. Let us look at this. What is the probability? See this each w j takes values minus j and plus j. What is the probability say w is equal to j? That is simply the probability of u x i j is equal to 1 that is probability of x i j greater than 0, but under the null hypothesis this simply half. And similarly, if I consider minus j then that is equal to probability of x i j less than 0 that is also half. So, what we have proved that they are simply uh, taking two values plus j and minus j each with probability. 
so x i j s sorry that w j s w 1 w 2 w n they are independent of course, we should not say identical because although they take two values with equal probability that those values are changing. Okay. So, this is w j here. And uh, if I look at the moment generating function of say w j m g f of w j that is expectation of e to the power t w j that is equal to half e to the power t j plus e to the power minus t j because it is taking two values. So, if I consider the m g f of t that is equal to sigma w j since they are independent it is simply becoming product of the MGFs of WJs. So, this is nothing but product of I uh, j is equal to 1 to n half e to the power t j plus e to the power minus t j. Now, if I look at m t of minus t, then it is same as m t of t. That is expectation of e to the power minus t x is equal to expectation of e to the power t sorry t t. So, this is same as saying m minus t at t is same as m t of t. So, minus t and t have the same distribution. So, if a random variable and its negative has the same distribution, it means that t has a distribution symmetric about 0. So, this is interesting. We have obtained the distribution of t is symmetric about 0 and what is t plus? We have expressed t plus in terms of t. So, if t is symmetric about 0, t plus will be symmetric about n into n plus 1 by 4. So, so these things actually uh, give, give us more features about the test statistic that we are using here. So, the distribution of t plus is symmetric about n into n plus 1 by 4. If I look at expectation of t that is 0 expectation of t plus that will become n into n plus 1 by 4 and uh, variance of t that is n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by 6. Well, this you can calculate from the MGF because we have the MGF we can use MGF of because second moment we can obtain by see this is a product of the terms. So, if I consider one derivative then I will get here in the product. So, each term will be coming here <coughs> and uh, there will become a minus sign here in each of them because there are n terms here. So, at uh, ith level this term will be differentiated other terms will be there, but the term which is differentiated will give me a minus value. So, that will cancel out. When we go for the second derivative, now that term will become actually positive, other terms will become 0, but that will happen with each of them. So, it is becoming basically sigma of j square because half half is there, so that will be adding up. So, that is giving you simply n into n plus 1 by 
into 2 n plus 1 by 6. And if I consider variance of t plus, then simply because it is half times that, so that is becoming n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 divided by 24. So, this is interesting, we are able to uh, find out the distribution of t plus the distribution of t and we are able to derive its sum of the uh, first and second moments etcetera under the null. Now, once that is there and we are expressing it as a summation, we can actually consider the central limit theorem. Let us consider. application of Lyapunov's central limit theorem. Lyapunov's central limit theorem is applicable for independent, but possibly non-identical uh, non uh, random variables. So, w1, w2, wn they are independent expectation of w i. So, I am writing down the statement here. Let us consider expectation of w i is equal to mu i, variance of w i is equal to say sigma i square. Let us consider the third central moment of w i. Let us call it say rho i cube. And if we are defining the terms like w is equal to sigma of w i, mu is equal to sigma of mu i, sigma i square is equal to sum of sigma i square, rho cube is equal to sigma of rho i cube. Then if rho by sigma goes to 0, then the distribution of w minus mu by sigma is asymptotically normal as n tends to infinity. So, this is in convergence in distribution or convergence in law. So, this is actually the Lyapunov central limit theorem. See, if you look at the original central limit theorem, which is for the independent and identically distributed random variables, which is also called uh, I think Lindberg Levy central limit theorem, that is applicable when random variables are independent and identically distributed. We only assume that the variance is existing. So, second moment's existence is there. When the random variables are uh, not identically distributed, then this Lyapunov central limit theorem gives a sufficient condition for the uh, asymptotic distribution being normal. B basically, this is the uh, central limit theorem here, but here we have to assume that third one here. That means, the third uh, central moments must exist and then the condition is imposed upon that. Now, if we look at our t, it is exactly of that same form. Here, w1, w2, wn are independent. Certainly, they are not identically distributed. Uh, their distributions are symmetric, means are 0, but variance will be j square by 2 plus j square by 2. So, that is j square. So, let us use this. So, t is sigma w j, j is equal to 1 to n, expectation w j that is mu j that is equal to j by 2 minus j by 2 that is equal to 0. If we consider say sigma j square that is expectation of w j square that will become equal to j square by 2 plus j square by 2 that is equal to j square. And if I consider the third central moment, since mean is 0, it is simply equal to j cube by 2 plus j cube by 2, because we have taken the absolute value here. So, this is j cube. So, now we write all the terms here, mu is 0, sigma square is equal to sigma of j square, j is equal to 1 to n, that is equal to n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by 6. What is rho cube? rho cube is equal to sigma of j cube for j is equal to 1 to n. 
then it is equal to n square into n plus 1 square by 4. So if I consider rho by sigma, uh, so there will be some constant here because there is some constant coming here. Actually we can just write it as n square n plus 1 square by 4 to the power 1 by 3 divided by n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 by 6 to the power 1 by 2. So, this is proportional to as n becomes large. So, this is n to the power 4. So, n to the power 4 by 3 divided by n to the power 3 by 2. Some cons constant will be there. So, this is uh, 4 by 3 minus uh, 3 by 2. So, that is coming in the denominator. So, n to the power so 3 by 2 minus 4 by 3 that is simply becoming 1 by 6. So, this certainly goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, Leah Punnov's CLT holds and we get asymptotic distribution of this T now mu is 0. So, T divided by sigma this sigma is square root of this quantity T by sigma this is converging to z in distribution as n tends to infinity. So, asymptotic distribution of T is simply normal and uh, since there is a direct relationship between T plus and T. So, if I put it here then I get the asymptotic distribution of T plus also. This also gives the asymptotic distribution of T plus minus n into n plus 1 by 4 divided by square root of n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by 24 as asymptotical normal distribution. Uh, so, so this is basically uh, giving a method that for large sample size we can straight away apply a normal test for testing the equality of the median to 0. Suppose n is uh, really large for example, let us take say some particular value. Suppose I take say n is equal to say 20. Okay. If I take n is equal to 20, then what will become n into n plus 1 by 4 that is becoming equal to 20 into 21 by 4 that is 105 and uh, n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by 24 that will become equal to 20 into 21 into 41 divided by 24. So, this is 41 into 35 divided by 2. So, in this case t plus minus 105 divided by square root of 41 by 35 by 2. This will be approximated by normal 0 1. So, if we are considering z greater than c t plus greater than c alpha then it is equivalent to z greater than z alpha and that we take to be alpha. So, we can actually consider the value based on this. So, testing problem. So, we calculate suppose some data set is given we calculate t plus for that for n is equal to 20 and then we compare with this value. Similarly, for the two sided testing problem we can directly use t itself. So, we will look at the t by sigma whether it is large or small corresponding to z alpha by 2. So, you can see here the concept of this uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test is let me just uh, look at the 
term here I will explain once again. Let me just so from the original observations here one assumption is there of course that we are considering symmetry about the median okay that is uh, if it is symmetric around some point that point becomes median and therefore we are checking actually symmetry about the median and now we are testing whether the median is equal to a specific value without loss of generality we take that specific value to be zero so then the testing problem becomes whether the median is zero or it is greater than 0, less than 0 or not equal to 0. For this, this wilcoxon sindrang statistic considers the magnitude of the x i's. Based on that, we create the ranks of the absolute values and we look at those values which are positive. From the positive ones, we look at the ranks of modulus x i among this. So, so, once that is done that, so there is the sum of the ranks of modulus x i, this is called the Wilcoxon sign rank statistic. So, this can be used. Uh, we have shown that, okay, the distribution of this can be calculated using a recursion relation, uh, which I gave that is in the terms of u n function here. This u n, u n is having a recursion here. So, one can calculate and of course, some uh, tables of these are available, but even uh, if we are not using the tables of that, if the sample size is somewhat large, then we can actually use this approximation because it is actually turning out to be the sum. So, T plus is written as a sum, T is written as a sum and therefore, the distribution of uh, this can be approximated by a normal distribution if the sample size is sufficiently large. Now, based on this, the problem becomes quite simple. Uh, now, whenever we are having uh, large data sets, we straight away use the uh, normal test based on the T or T plus. Therefore, it is very convenient to apply here. Uh, we will extend this concept uh, uh, further. We are, uh, we will consider something called Walsh averages and we will consider this uh, sign rank statistic in terms of that we will also define the general uh, linear rank statistic. See here you see we are considering sigma of u x i into r i plus. So, we are actually rank adding the ranks linearly I and mean, that means in multiplying by u x i, u x i can take value 1 and 0. We will consider a general function of this nature, we look at how it can be used for constructing some other tests. So, that we will be covering in the next lecture.